Now, before we really get going, let me just call out a couple of things. Number one, if you haven't done so already, make sure you check out the Great Balls of Fire review, aka hashtag WWE Balls review on this channel. Uh, also know that I recently did some New Japan G1 USA reviews. Yeah, I believe, can you believe it? The Impact Wrestling reviews are back. Ow, yes! Assume the position. And this week, you're going to want to make sure you hashtag subscribe or die because we're trying to hashtag make wrestling fun again. And one way to do that is with me reviewing WCW Sin 2001. Ow! Baby, for those of you that know, believe me, you know that you're going to be in for a special treat on Throwback Thursday. And that's all I'll say for now. Just a little bit of a tease. But anyways, on to the business at hand. This week's Raw. It's frustrating because I had a couple straight Raws where I was enjoying what I was seeing. Felt like I got, you know, something good out of my three hours invested each week. Usually a big challenge. Then we go into a filler pay-per-view, Great Balls of Fire, with this weird-ass name, but really excited for it, most notably the two money matches. And while the show wasn't epic, uh, it didn't piss me off. I didn't feel like I wasted my three hours watching it. And again, talking about the state of the WWE product today, that's progress. That is a positive. But it's like the WWE just can't help themselves. They just do it to spite the fans. They do it to spite themselves. I don't know what the hell it is. But it seems like they're determined to make sure they live up to the mantra of hashtag WWE ruins everything. This show this week was the absolute drizzling shits. Who books this crap? Coming off of Great Balls of Fire, you had two matches that everybody was buzzing about, two matches that everybody was talking about. And in particular, one person above all else that everybody was talking about, and that's Braun Strowman. So we figured the best way to follow that up is to not have him on the show at all. I don't care what you want to say about selling the injuries. He was able to walk out of the ambulance Sunday night. He should have been on Raw. That was a strategic mistake, period. And then to top it all off, when you're talking about the people that actually were on the show, Samoa Joe, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, we waited two hours to actually get to the one thing that the fans actually gave a shit about. And, and that promo segment was awesome. Samoa Joe was incredible. You got Brock Lesnar saying shit on live TV. Roman Reigns is kind of there, and even then he's kind of using logic of, Kurt, you guys used to do this type of shit back in the day, and he's right. But for all of you talking about the Romans turning heel and Brock, a bronze turning baby face. You can pump the brakes on that shit because WWE is not changing anything about the way they present Roman. And Braun was, frankly, already a baby face. So let's put that to bed right away. But that was really the one true highlight of this show was that segment, which again was great and it was incredible. We still had to wait two freaking hours to get to it to where by that point in time, most people out there in TV world were more, more fixated on the All-Star Game and the Home Run Derby and Aaron freaking Judge. You have a couple of exciting shows in a row, a, a pay-per-view that didn't totally suck, and then we just act like we didn't even bother to care about writing this show. This was just terrible. You started off with Big Cass. Uh, promo is whatever. All right, Test 2.0. We'll believe it when we freaking see it. You're just as likely to be future endeavored in two years as to be main eventing a future WrestleMania. But who knows? But he gets interrupted by the big show because, you know, this is the money feud that we're freaking dying for. We don't care about big show anymore. Frankly, a lot of us don't really care about Cass. And then, of course, the WWE, because hashtag WWE ruins everything, instead of taking this new big freaking monster heel and making him a monster and having him stand up to big show and maybe wallop the hell out of the big show, we just have him back down and slink out of the ring like every other cookie cutter chicken shit heel that we have. Because again, that's how we make stars, right? <sniffs> you get Elias Sampson versus Finn Balor. Because again, we actually had at least some type of a purpose for this match to be on the pay-per-view. So let's not put it on the pay-per-view. And Sampson singing gets heat. He gets a reaction. And the WWE lives in a world where reaction is priority number one for them. They don't care what the reaction is. They just want a reaction. That's how desperate for attention they are. Desperate for any type of affections of any kind 
So let's interrupt the one thing that gets him a reaction every single time. That's stupid. Hashtag WWE ruins everything. Samson's an impressive looking dude. He's got a shtick that gets a reaction. It gets some legit heat. Why in the hell would you undercut it just for the fuck all of it every time? The dude has potential. So we decide the best way to follow up on the potential is cut him off from the one thing that gets him heat and then have him job on raw to the fucking bullet twink. And I don't care what anybody says. Eventually, hashtag WWE ruins everything. You're going to be talking about in another year or two how much Finn Balor sucks. Mark my fucking words. Then, to top it all off, we're doing our best to ruin another legendary tag team. It's not bad enough that we brought in the Dudley boys and completely squandered that. And, you know, this kind of last run tour was a complete and total joke. Now we're getting to that point with the Hardys. At least we gave him some mic time, so at least it was something a little bit different. But then we have him jobbing out to the fucking bald jobbers. Then we have the Revival coming out to beat him the fuck down. Why was this needed? If you're going to sit there and say, well, they're getting ready to go into broken territory, what confidence do you have that WWE would even know what the hell to begin to do with that? Because again, hashtag WWE ruins everything. They are doing everything they can to make the Hardys just another team instead of what they are in the history of the company, one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Why would you do that? It's fucking ridiculous. Miz TV. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Miz is the WWE's mid-card MVP, beyond question. And he does elevate the profile of whatever mid-card title he has, in this case, the IC title. The Mizzies, this was fun, but of course... Just like anything else, you can take a good segment, sprinkle in a little bit of wash your ass, comb forward Dean Ambrose, and he ruins every fucking thing with his stench. Just terrible. And then Rollins comes out and makes the save because, again, who fucking cares about Seth Rollins at this point? And you think teaming these two guys up potentially will make any difference for them? No, we just won't give the fuck about the both of them together. And I know what everybody's immediate reaction was when Dean Ambrose came out at first before he started getting beat down was... Let this feud die. It needs to die. Stop it, WWE. Stop it. But you can't help it. You're going to do everything you can to try and ruin The Miz, too, because, again, hashtag WWE ruins everything. The women's tag match. You have Sasha and Bayley versus Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss. It's Sasha and Alexa that have the issue. They have the beef. They came off a surprisingly good match from Great Balls of Fire. You should be building up some real heat between these two to advance the story even more so that way you have a monster on your hand potentially at SummerSlam. So, of course, we have Bayley get the pin after completely destroying any momentum or purpose her character had whatsoever. Because why? Because we're fucking stupid, that's why. The Shattered Truth, also known as a paper raw show. Literally months of building up to this relaunch of Gold Dust and this issue with R Truth just to give us a couple of raw matches. Like the stupid thing about this company is, again, why watch the special events? Why watch the pay-per-views when you can just get the shit on free TV or cable TV, depending on how you want to look at it? And this is another example of that. Gold Dust and R Truth actually had a story. Based off of the time invested, the energy investment, the television time investment, these two actually should have a pay-per-view match, even if it is on the pre-show. But again, we're just burying it in the middle of freaking Raw. And of course, the match itself goes over like a fart in church. Nobody cares. Goldust wins. Nobody cares about either one of these guys at this point. And I'm sure WWE has absolutely nothing planned of any consequence for either one of these guys after this. So why do it? WWE ruins everything, that's why. The Cruiserweight Tag Match. I, I do appreciate the fact that WWE uh, already is doing a tribute for the greatest man that ever lived by having an Austin Aries Classic on 205 Live this week, also known as a I Quit Match. I'm sorry. You kind of walked into that one. Uh, but I can even see it. It's coming, it's coming. They're going to do everything they can to squash and squander this Titus brand, Titus Worldwide, whatever they want to call it. This thing has promise. This thing has potential. You can do something with this. You can elevate some guys. And again, they're just not going to. They're just not going to. I was really surprised. Was Neville eating the pinfall here? Did my eyes deceive me? The king of the cruiserweights? I can't remember the last time he was actually pinned in anything. And, and it really doesn't matter at the end of the day because as great as Neville's work has been, and it has been great work, 
He's the one saving grace for this piece of crap cruiserweight division. The cruiserweight division just once again shows, as I predicted going back to last August, that hashtag WWE ruins everything. They badly need to get all of the women on Raw, and they need to get the cruiserweights the fuck off of Raw onto SmackDown for either division to really have a chance long term. I'm just saying. Uh, Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt. Somebody thought this was a good idea to main event Raw. Again, tying into the whole concept of why bother watching this match that you didn't care about on the pay-per-view when the next night you're going to have an even longer version of it on Raw. This is Russo, Bischoff, WCW bullshit, TNA bullshit that we've knocked those guys and those companies for for years. And WWE's gotten into that space where they're just as bad about it, if not worse. Again. Why would we care about the big matches if the big matches just happen on cable any fucking ways? Why have the special events? And I think it's a fair question. And again, who gives a shit about either one of these guys at this point? Well, JoJo might care about uh, Bray, the eater of ass, the eater of puss, uh, swallow the buzzard and all that stuff. But other than that, who really cares? I mean... When I talk about hashtag WWE ruins everything, it is really epitomized in Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins. It didn't matter what they were going to do in this match. Frankly, nobody was going to give a shit. Even if there was any semblance of a reaction here, it really doesn't matter because nobody cares about either one of these guys. And WWE has to blame themselves a lot for that. Now, Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt, being the performers, could be better at overcoming it. Uh, but ultimately, it's about the company and how, again, hashtag WWE ruins everything. Bray Wyatt won again, so you really wonder what the hell the purpose was. You're assuming, hey, a bunch of people that watch Raw didn't watch the pay-per-view, so instead of trying to entice them to watch the pay-per-view, you sit there <laughs> the next night on Raw and just have an even longer match where Bray Wyatt wins again, and yet again, no fucks given. And even with the way you ended it, with having The Miz and his entourage come out, and then Dean Ambrose make the save, no fucks given. The only way you would have given a fuck about this particular finish is if Dean Ambrose would have turned around and smacked the shit out of Seth Rollins multiple times with that chair. Then maybe you could say, at least in the short term, there's something different, something to pique your interest a little bit. But ultimately, there isn't. It's dumb because the WWE is dumb, and they make people like Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins dumb, and hashtag WWE ruins everything. And then you finish off the show, of all things, with the cliffhanger of Kurt Angle's Big Secret. I, personally, to me, there's no reason to do this type of storyline yet with Kurt Angle. People are enjoying him in this authority role as the general manager. He's only been back a few months. If it's going to lead to a match, so be it. But do you really need to go to that so quickly? Should that maybe be saved for a bigger event like, I don't know, maybe WrestleMania? It's just a thought. And then why the fuck is dopey-ass Corey Graves having to be involved in this in any way, shape, or form? I just don't know. I don't know. Um, but again, this whole thing about texting for weeks and weeks and weeks, to have it be the cliffhanger that you end Raw with, there better be a payoff. There better be a bang. And there better be a really big bang. And you start to think about it and you wonder, who could it be? Who could it be? Well, I know deep down who I want it to be. There is only one option for this story. There is only one endgame, only one real play here. And that is Dixie Carter. Now, let me tell you something. If you want people buzzing next week about Raw, if you want to see a fucking epic segment, if you want to see somebody be able to get real heat, imagine Dixie Carter walking out with Kurt Angle and then she gets the mic and says something like, hold on, darling, the place is going to fucking lose it. And social media is going to go crazy. Just look at the reaction of the buzz that Dixie Carter was generating just for being on a WWE 24 special about Kurt Angle. Oh, my God. If you want to talk about you bring in Dixie Carter and you try to run some type of power struggle between her and Kurt against Stephanie and Triple H, then I'm on board. So even in the sense that hashtag WWE ruins everything, and they still very well could. This still could be a complete and total abortion of a story when all is said and done with absolutely no payoff. They still have a chance to redeem themselves. And you people know damn good and well what that redemption point is. 
hashtag we want Dixie. We want Dixie.